inguinal hernia as the topic. And inguinal hernia basically is the protrusion of uh, the intestine through the abdominal wall. And this can be uh, very, very troublesome if it becomes uh, strangulated or incarcerated. Now, initially, it can just present as a bulge, but it can eventually get stuck and the blood supply can eventually be cut off. And there's two types. There's direct inguinal hernia and there's indirect. And I will try my best to explain each one. So the first thing I need to do is draw some anatomy to kind of explain uh, what is going on. So this is the area of the genitalia. And this is, of course, the medial side. And this is the lateral side. And this is known as the inguinal triangle. And I'll label the sides. So uh, this side essentially is the rectus abdominis muscle. And then this side over here at the bottom is the inguinal ligament. And then this side are the inferior epigastric vessels, the artery and the vein. And then um, I'll draw two circles, one here and one here, and running through uh, from each side is this tube, and this is known as the inguinal canal. And this uh, circle represents the entrance to the inguinal canal, and it's given a special name. It's called the deep inguinal ring. And then the other uh, circle is known as the superficial inguinal ring. Superficial inguinal ring. And the importance of this diagram is basically that you want to know what is the difference between direct and indirect. So indirect uh, inguinal hernia will come out through here. So this is an indirect inguinal hernia. So basically, it comes out, uh, it protrudes through the deep inguinal ring. And what's important is if you notice in this diagram, it's lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. Now, the direct inguinal hernia comes out through here. As you can see, it's medial to the inferior epigastric vessels, and a direct inguinal hernia protrudes through the abdominal wall. So that's a very important uh, uh, distinction between indirect and direct. So now let's talk about the symptoms. Now the symptoms uh, depend on what uh, level of severity this uh, hernia is in. And in particular, we're talking about inguinal hernias. If it's just a regular inguinal hernia, then it can really be asymptomatic or asymptomatic, no symptoms. It will just be basically a visible bulge. Remember, the skin is still covering it, so you don't actually see the intestines. You just see the bulge. The intestines have protruded through the abdominal wall, but because the skin is covering it, you don't see the intestines. What you see is a bulge. Or you might have some vague discomfort. But that's pretty much it. Now, the problems occur in the next two. The next level is an incarcerated hernia. And what that means is that the intestine is stuck. So the intestine is stuck. And if the intestine is stuck, then that can lead to the intestine being blocked or obstructed. And if that's the case, what will happen is that this hernia can no longer be reduced. And what I mean by reduced is that Simply put, um, you can actually push your finger into the hernia and push it back. And that's really just what I mean by reduced. If it's incarcerated, however, it cannot be reduced. And that's a very, very distinct, a distinct sign of an incarcerated hernia. The most worrisome is the last one, which is a strangulated hernia. And if it's strangulated, that basically means that the blood supply is cut off. And if the blood supply is cut off, 
you uh, start presenting with uh, increasing pain. And then you can also have nausea and vomiting. Patient can also present with a fever. And the patient can also have an elevated white blood cell count, which kind of starts um, showing you that the patient has some sort of infection as well or some sort of perforation. Now the diagnosis, uh, essentially it's just a clinical diagnosis, right? You see this bulge. But remember, if it's uh, incarcerated, uh, that means that you won't be able to reduce it. You can't push it back, inability to reduce the hernia. And if it's strangulated, then in addition to uh, just a clinical diagnosis of observation, you will also be able to, uh, you know, check vitals and order a WBC count and then, um, you know, clearly have a more uh, serious presentation. Now the treatment is observation if there's no real problems, but if there is incarceration or if there's strangulation, then you need to do surgery. So this is a very important part, urgent surgery, uh, if there's a hernia that's either stuck or if the blood supply is run out or cut off. So now let's take a look at some vignettes, see what this looks like. A 20-year-old offensive lineman who plays football for a small college in your town presents to your office at mid-season with pain in his right groin. He describes it as a burning, aching sensation that gets worse when he coughs or strains during a bowel movement when he is required to block opponents or push against the blocking sled in practice. As part of the physical exam, you have the patient stand and insert your finger into the inguinal canal and follow the spermatic cord to the inguinal ring. When you reach the internal ring, the patient reports discomfort. When you ask him to cough and strain, the pain increases and you feel an impulse or bulge at the tip of your finger. The patient's history and physical exam findings are most consistent with which of the following. If you had just seen this question out of the blue, you might have to go through the choices, but this question is so classic for inguinal hernia that the answer becomes obvious. Next one. A 61-year-old man comes in with a colicky abdominal pain and vomiting of three days duration. Uh, on physical exam, he is moderately distended and has high-pitched hyperactive bowel sounds and a 5 centimeter tender groin mass. In direct questioning, he explains that he has had this bulge for many years but always was able to push it back in when he lies down. For the past three days, however, he has been unable to do so. He has a temperature of 102 and a white blood cell count of 12,500, which of the following is most appropriate management. Well, it was an excellent question. No doubt he's got a hernia. And he's got signs of incarceration because he's unable to reduce it. But he's also got signs of strangulation, meaning the blood supply is being cut off. And that's really, really bad. Uh, the signs are, of course, fever, and he's got an elevated WBC count as well. So in both cases, in incarcerated hernias and strangulated hernias, you have to do urgent surgery. So that would be choice E. And then the final one, a 53-year-old man comes to the emergency department because of intermittent crampy abdominal pain that has progressively worsened over the past six days. He had called you four days ago complaining of nausea and diarrhea and you had diagnosed him with gastroenteritis over the phone and told him to drink plenty of fluids. Now he says that he has not passed stool in two days, which is more his style because he is usually very constipated. He has no prior history of surgeries and has no chronic medical conditions. He denies any weight loss or fatigue. Temperature is 100, blood pressure is 130, pulse is 110, and respirations are 25. Physical exam shows an erythematous scrotum with a firm tender mass on the right side. Gentle manual attempts at reduction of the mass are unsuccessful. Most appropriate next step is to. The fact that you can't reduce it means that it is at least incarcerated. Whether it's strangulated or not, I'm not entirely sure. 
because we don't know the white blood cell count. Also, we don't really know uh, much more detail. I mean, he has some nausea, but we don't know if he is currently um, experiencing any severe nausea or vomiting. And he's got a, a low-grade temperature. So that's why I say it's at least incarcerated. Whether it's strangulated or not, it's possible, but it really doesn't matter because for both incarcerated and strangulated hernias, you need to do urgent surgery. And that would be, in this question, the correct answer would be D. Prepare him for immediate operation.